Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton, and welcome to Thursday's Everton 24-7 daily report. Well, it's our first rather quiet day this week, and even still, there is plenty of stuff going on regarding the Blues. Today's main story is one which only broke in the last hour or two, and it's one which I'm not best pleased about. Paris Saint-Germain have submitted a €30 million Euros bid for Idris Agana Gay. As I said the other day, their manager Thomas Tuchel said we were being cheeky by asking for €50 million Euro for him. But if our asking price is indeed cheeky, what on earth is their bid? It's derisory and we should, to be honest, we should just be telling them right where to go. Now, as I've said before, I'd be open to letting Ghana go for the right price, given that he is 30 later this year and it may be our final chance to recoup some big cash for him. Whatever happens, I wouldn't mind as long as we're not shortchanged and... To say €30 million Euros in this climate is short change for Ghana is an understatement. So, to be to safe to say, really, we, he won't be going anywhere just yet until basically PSG pull their finger out and get a grip. Ghana isn't the only one of our players who other teams are trying to buy today, and the Daily Mail reckon that Leipzig are in advanced talks to re-sign Adamola Luckman permanently. Um, apparently, there are only a few small details left to be resolved. The article also suggests that Crystal Palace might be in for him, but and that is intriguing to be fair because Luckman does come from South London and he may want to return to near his family. He's spoken about homesickness before, so that may be a possibility, but it's unlikely that Palace would stump up the cash unless maybe Wilfried Zaha leaves this summer. No doubt Marcel Brands and Marco Silva will be keen to get some cash in to fund more signings, but we may be able to make a bit more cash if we play the waiting game and maybe get a bit more going there. So we'll just have to wait and see. In terms of bringing in players, it's more of the same, it seems, as the Malcolm rumours. They continue to rumble on. And today, Diario AS in Spain reckon we are set to battle Arsenal for his signing. As we've already know that, but according to them, we are more likely to be able to meet Barcelona's asking price, with Marco Silva willing to pay upwards of £30 million if necessary. But Arsenal are trying to delay any progress we might make in those talks by trying to convince Barca to accept the deal where they pay in instalments. And they're trying, apparently trying to convince Malcolm himself to stall on any personal terms with us. So that suggests neither side are pursuing the loan move which many news outlets suggest that might have been the case earlier this week. But it's now up to us, it seems, to coax him to Everton. And hopefully we can take advantage of that good relationship that we have with Barcelona. And we can pull that off. As Obviously, there's Arsenal, but there's also PSG and a few other teams in there for him. And if we beat any of those teams to Malcolm, I think it would be quite the coup. And getting Malcolm now may well be our best shot at getting good value for money for a left-footed winger as any chance... That David Neres may leave Ajax this summer may well have been eradicated today as Yahoo Brazil report that Neres is close to backing up his claims that his future remains at Ajax by signing a new bumper contract to keep him in Amsterdam. Now all the Neres hype of the last few weeks appears to have been for nothing but hopefully we will have more luck in other areas. One of those areas will be getting players out the door and we've got a couple of loan, loan departures today to bring you and this was one, first of all, that we thought might go permanently. We were hoping would be a permanent deal. Luke Garbutt looks set for his umpteenth loan move since being on Everton's books, and this time it's to Ipswich Town. Of course, they're freshly relegated into League One. He was rumoured to make his loan to Oxford, which he spent last season with. He was looking at making that permanent last week, but those rumours appear to have fizzled out. Like I said on that show, it appears Garbutt, though, has found his level now in the third tier after what looked like a promising career, but that looks as if the, it may well be the level where he spends the rest of his career from here on in. The other two players who look to be leaving on loan today are players who I like to think may still have a future at Everton beyond their loan deals. Firstly, Keenan Dowell, who, despite being on a few loans to the Championship, does show a bit of promise and impressed at the under-21s for the England team. And he also impressed last season at Championship level for Sheffield United, where he did help them get promoted. Well, he is looking at completing his loan move to Derby today, and hopefully he can help Philip Koku's team end up with the same outcome this time next year. The second of those players who may well return afterwards is Josh Bowler. And we thought Middlesbrough were the favourites to get him on loan. 
But now it looks like his most temp most likely temporary destination will be Hull City, where he may well be battling alongside Jared Bowen, who of course was once a rumoured target of ours in the past month or so. And so we may well be battling with Bowen to earn his place on the wing for Hull. Or alternatively, maybe Bowen will leave for a Premier League club and Bowler will be the first choice. Either way, it'd be great to see Bowler get some game time at a more competitive level than under-23s and maybe we'll see him develop a bit in the Championship. Aside from the transfer rumours, Richarlison, of course, scored Brazil's third in the Copa America final on Sunday. Now, Richie hails from the region of Espirito Santo, which is a small region on the east coast of Brazil. And as a result of his contributions to the national team and as well as off the pitch, Richie has been awarded a prestigious sporting award in that region, the Jose de Anchieta Fontana Commendation of Sporting Merit. So well done Richarlison on winning that award and well done to myself for pronouncing it correctly. Moving on and finally on tonight's roundup, Chelsea got their pre-season underway last night drawing one all with Bohemians in Ireland. And Kurt Zuma played the second half of that game. He didn't perform particularly well, but it hasn't stopped a lot of Chelsea fans getting excited about the idea of Zuma being back in their squad. And social media, it seems like it's going to be a battle between us and Chelsea fans now. It's also a battle for his affections, if you like. It all comes down to whether Frank Lampard wants to keep him or not, though. And hopefully once this pre-season is finished, we can still try and sort a deal out for him later on this window so hopefully there will be some good news on that front in the coming weeks hopefully there'll be some good news all round to bring you tomorrow so tune in for tomorrow night's daily report to find out until then make sure you comment like and subscribe and thanks again for watching on the toffee blues